The government is good at one thing. They're good at breaking your legs, giving you a taxpayer-funded crutch, which they stole from somebody else, and telling you, see, if it weren't for the government, you wouldn't be able to walk, boy. All right, this is a very important video. I want you to get it out to everybody you know. The spirit of freedom is resistance. And if we don't get together and get our collective heads out of our asses and unite against people who wanna restrict or take our freedoms, we are dead. Historically, we're dead. If you lose your freedoms, you lose your life. The biggest destroyer of life in the last century alone is government. It's not pandemics, it's not natural disasters, it's government. Over 250 million people have lost their lives in the last century alone because they trusted their government to keep them safe and their government turned right around and destroyed their lives. Guys, when you lose your freedom, you lose your life. And that number, that 250 million number, excludes war deaths. If you want to add those deaths on, you got to add on another 340 to 360 million people. But 250 million people lost their lives because they trusted the government to keep them safe. What's the government always telling you? We need to keep you safe. How are we going to keep you safe? Well, you got to wear your mask. If they start making mandatory mask regulations, federal regulations, state regulations, they are your enemy because they're trying to take away your freedom. If they make something mandatory, then you can't opt out. And what is the punishment for you not obeying the mandatory mask regulation? Oh, you're going to be fined? Or will you be imprisoned? Will you lose your life? Yeah, because every law is backed by the threat of force. If they make this law and they try to enforce this law, they're literally restricting your freedom in the name of keeping the public safe. It's for the public good. You're jeopardizing public health. Don't you understand? They're flipping the script on us, guys. They're making you look like the bad guy when they're the ones that are initiating force and violence against you because you're not complying with their orders. How about contact tracing? How about get the app on your phone? We're not making it mandatory, but if you don't get the app on your phone, well, then you can't go shopping for your groceries. You can't pay your electric bill. You can't step outside of your house unless you have the app. You submit to contact tracing. You submit to testing. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to back us into a corner and take our freedoms. And it's not because they care about you. This isn't about keeping you safe. This is about keeping you enslaved. Please listen to this video and share it with everybody you know. Well, let me ask you this. We, I, in a lot of places, you don't have public acceptance or public uh, coordination uh, on trying to stop the spread of this disease. There are people out there that just don't think it's as big of a deal as, as it's being made out to be. So how do you, as, as a health expert or somebody trying to create policy... Trying to create policy... How do you get through to those people? Is there a way to allow people... Allow people... Allow people... To return to their, not normal daily lives, but maybe their normal activities in a safe way? Can we reopen but do it safely? It's, a, it's a, an important question, Katie. And the truth here is that you're probably going to get buy-in from what we've seen in survey reports. 70 to 80 percent of Americans, hopefully, we can get to the point where we're wearing masks, where we can't implement strict social distancing guidelines. But here's the sad truth. The sad truth is just like somebody 10 years ago could smoke a cigarette in your face and blow secondhand smoke in your face. I'm, I'm assuming that's unwanted. Right now, there is no law saying you have to wear a mask. Why isn't that the case? Why aren't governors making those masks mandatory? We had a security guard die in Michigan because somebody felt that they had the right to kill him as opposed to wear a mask, which was what he was trying to encourage a retailer and a family dollar store to actually just do. Wear a mask for the betterment of not only your own health, but those of your fellow Americans. We need governors to take a strong stand on masks because, frankly, I know it sounds simple. That's as Something basic like that can save lives. We need mandatory masks. That's one way. We talk about saving the lives and the livelihood of the American people and, and of course, the life of our democracy. So in terms of saving lives, the only way we're going to have uh, rid ourselves of this as well as open up our economy uh, is evidence, science-based testing, testing, testing. Testing, 
Just think of the T's, testing, tracing, treatment, and isolation then when necessary, of course, with social distancing. When you're tested for COVID-19, you might assume that your test result will stay confidential with your doctor and the health department. After all, that's how it usually works with medical information, but we're living in unusual times. The Associated Press has revealed that across America, there's widespread sharing of medical information between health officials and law enforcement. Denver is doing it, so is El Paso County. It is law enforcement specific information that is only in our computer aided dispatch. Jacqueline Kirby is with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. She says addresses are flagged identifying homes of people who have tested positive for COVID-19. We get sensitive information all the time. We have cautions on addresses for a myriad of reasons, and this is just an additional layer of protection for our deputies. In many states, it's now mandatory to wear a mask when you leave your house to help stop the spread of COVID-19. It's now mandatory to wear a mask when you leave your house. It's now mandatory to wear a mask when you leave your house. Masks are very important to not only protect yourself, but to protect others in the community. People on the right who say that the mask is an imposition, it a, it's represents control of big government, uh, and they want their freedom from that. And people on the left who say this is, this is the best use of government to protect us, to protect other folks. That's the most benign interpretation of it. Wearing a mask is an act of kindness. It's an act of kindness towards other people. Uh, it's an act of kindness toward yourself. It's an act of kindness toward society. I would just say it's also an act of patriotism. Health security is individual, global, national, all security. And we have to find a way forward. And so as we look to putting a vaccine out there, it's going to be critically important that we think about how we deliver vaccines to those communities that are the most vulnerable, the hardest hit, and how we get a vaccine up and out in an equitable way to protect all. And in the meantime, we need to wear masks we need to social distance. We need to be responsible as citizens. And I think we're looking at a new kind of sacrifice in this country right now. And it's very painful. This doesn't make sense to quarantine the population in terms of you could get quarantined again and again and again. Even though you're healthy and never sick, you will not be allowed to leave your house. Now, you've been hearing that this is all voluntary. You'll hear it throughout the, the speeches, I've listened to a lot of governors. I'll put on the Washington governor really quickly so you can hear him say, oh yeah, it's, they, they'll follow it. But let me show you before I do that, a couple of the documents that are out there. This is right on his website. He's already rolled out the plan. And basically you can read this, request for voluntary quarantine. This is for somebody you're the legal guardian at. It tells you to go and remain at the address by the date and time. And then I love this. It is very important that you comply with this request for voluntary quarantine. Remember, I'm not sick. Nobody's sick. Your health and the health of others depend on it. If you do not comply with this request for voluntary quarantine, we may use a detention order enforced by the police to assure your compliance. Hmm. That's the strangest voluntary request I've ever received. And then this is also on the website. And I've put everything here because obviously go research this stuff yourself. But you can see here, if you use a court order because someone is not following, they have non-compliance, you can be incarcerated and fined up to $2,000 per day. I want to share with you, this is just something in California, that's where I'm located. But you can read here, and I'm assuming that a lot of other states have similar things. This shows that they can, because you can see here, a threat of a communicable disease outbreak or epidemic that threatens the public health, it gives them the rights to do this. Adopt and enforce regulations requiring strict or modified isolations or quarantine for any contagious infections or communicable diseases. It takes measures as necessary to ascertain the nature of disease and prevent its spread. It can take control of the body of any living person or the corpse of any deceased. It can quarantine, isolate, inspect, and disaffect persons, animal, houses, rooms, and other property. So based on what we have right now, I don't have any privacy rights. You can see here, this is just New Jersey. I just wanted to throw this out there because other states have laws. This was enacted in 2005. So I suggest you go start researching what is allowed in your state and what rights you have given up when you start looking at 
a disease that could pose a risk to the health of the population? Let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, if can I stop you? Did, yeah. No if right not to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. If the vaccine Where is that in the Constitution? To prevent, if the vaccination is designed to prevent the spreading disease. If the vaccination is only to prevent a disease that you will get, for example, if there's a disease that will kill you, you have the right to refuse that, but you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated against a uh, contagious disease. Public health, the police power of the Constitution, gives the state the power to compel that, and there are cases in the United States Supreme Court. I want to share about apps because you've heard they're voluntary. They're voluntary. And right now in the U.S., there's some apps out there and we'll look at those, but they're about 2% of the people have downloaded them. And they said they need at least 50 to 70% of the population to download it to make apps effective. But how do these apps work? Well, let me share what they're doing in India. So India released an app and they said, this is a voluntary app. You do not need to download it. However, get this, in order to go anywhere, you have to have the app. So if you wanna get on a plane, you have to show the app that you are not under quarantine or isolation. You wanna get into work, you have to show your app. You wanna get on a train, you have to show your app. So they said, oh, it's voluntary. They had the most downloads, more than Pokemon Go, because guess what? You couldn't go back to life without downloading the app. Now, I also put here New Zealand's app. What they do is they give you a QR code. You have to scan that QR code to get anywhere. So if you're supposed to be on quarantine or isolated, guess what? You're not getting anywhere because your app doesn't show you're cleared. So that's how they're really able to enforce this without a, a huge police or military presence because you just can't go anywhere without the app. You can't get in the grocery store because they're going to have a QR code where you need to scan in. You may be thinking, well, do they even have that in the United States? Well, here's four states that already have their app ready to be downloaded. And like I said, they're at about 2% right now. Um, but you might've noticed this on your iPhone the other day. This showed a software update. And if you didn't see it, you might've already got the automatic update. But basically it says, this allows um, COVID-19 contact tracing apps to work. And you may not even have known it. It's, it was a very quick little update, but it has already come to the United States. Recently, Google and Apple just gave out some information. I thought this was great. Here's the website at the, at the bottom. Obviously, I want you to do your own research, but you can kind of see here how it works that you can see that you're close to somebody and you get a notification that, uh-oh, you need to be quarantined, you were too close, someone had it. And then listen to this, in this second phase in the coming months, this is really interesting because it talks about that they're gonna use Bluetooth in the first phase, but without requiring an app to be installed. If a match is detected, the user will be notified. And if the user has not already downloaded an official public health authority app, they will be prompted to download an official app and advise on next steps. You're not gonna have a choice. They're telling you it's it's voluntary at this point, but so was social distancing, and then we got locked down in our house. So it is not voluntary. This is happening, and you need to be aware. So I suggest this is a great document. Pull up this COVID-19 document that Apple and Google gave out. It really talks about all the different things that are going to happen because of the app, and it is scary. Just to kind of share with you the different states if you think your state is exempt because of it might be a red state versus a blue state every state is doing this okay so i would suggest checking out this bill hr 6666 and basically there's a hundred billion dollars that they're asking for 2020 and additional years for sub subsequent fiscal year financing for 2021 and beyond so if you think this isn't happening and you think they're not investing a lot of money in it they are they're trying to get $100 billion to track and trace us and keep us quarantined. 
how do you think they're going to allow you to get back into society without being quarantined and isolated again and again and again, especially as disease spreads or we do more testing and we realize that maybe there's a lot of people out there that have it that just don't show symptoms, but they'll need to be isolated. You'll see that there's 120 antibody tests. In general, these tests are not reliable for the individuals to act based on the results. So basically, they're saying even if you have antibodies in the coronavirus, it's still unknown if that protects you from getting sick again. There's probably only one way that you're going to be able to get out of your house, and that's going to be to be vaccinated. So just watch out for that because that is really becoming a hot topic of, of the vaccination. And that might be the only way that you're going to be released out of this tracking and tracing in terms of being allowed to go into stores. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support more content like this, grab one of these hard-hitting conversation starting shirts from the store. I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video. Deaf and dumb thespians take the silent stages with their cobweb throats. They can't sing any notes, so the audience begins dispersing. The actors get pissed, they start cursing. They're tired of rehearsing. They're ready to do the damn show. They're ready to go. You know what I mean? Fuck the quarantine. Fuck COVID-19. Fuck a fucking vaccine. Social engineering at the center stage. About to go full circle when we turn the page. Miss Deborah Burks, you old bitch, putting COVID on old bits and certificates. It's ridiculous. We, we should be enraged and our rate at our newfound fate and change the current state of mind controls. As Mr. Gates pulls the levers of power from his ivory tower, he is a Zionist, a mad scientist. With unlimited funds, we need to run or we need to get some more guns. And we need to do that shit while it's possible. Cause pretty soon I swear it's not gonna be optional. Are you hearing me? The wealthy be stealthy ushering in this tyranny. I don't want a mask, give me an oozy.